Hi guys, this is Kristen and this is my husband Corey. Hey guys. And my husband was working on um, some posts today on Facebook and he started, I mean it stems from what we told our pastor about how we met and um, it stems from that and he started making a just notes about it um, and it turned into a post that he wanted to share with people and ultimately it's a testimony. So, um, we wanted to share it with you guys because what he wrote, I feel like is really important and, um, could open people's eyes to the truth about the afterlife and what we've gone through. And, um, I'll just let him start. So, crazy fact about us is uh, about five years ago, her and I were ghost hunters. And we were, I was here in Texas, she was in Oregon, and I was a part of the Texas Ghost Society, she was part of the Oregon Ghost Society, and she was the case manager there, and I was a, a historian and a tech guy for the Texas Ghost Society. So I'm just going to kind of read through just kind of what I posted. And uh, when we first met five years ago, we met through a network of friends online. Those network of friends were ghost hunters. We were both avid ghost hunters, Chris and I. I was a historian, tech assistant in, for the Texas Ghost Society. Kristen was the, on the Oregon Ghost Society. And we would go out on cases where people called us because they had a ghost problem. And, or so they thought. Dun, uh, yeah. Dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, as they portray it on TV, you know, the ghost adventures and ghost hunters, they have all the equipment, they have all those devices, they have the cameras, K2 meters, you know, the whole slew of it. You know, we had all that. And so whenever they would call, that's what we would go to do. So we'd be, there would be houses, you know, people's residences, there would be businesses, lots of different places we'd go. But while we were doing that, we were under the assumption, doing all of this, that we were helping the ones that had been stuck due to unfinished business cross over into the light. So that's why we were doing what we were doing. We, by talking to these ghosts and doing everything, we were thinking that we were helping them to cross over because there was something they needed to say, something, you know, that we wanted to catch on recording because we thought if we caught it on recording, then they would pass over. So, where we got that from, I have no idea. But, um... Ultimately, we were seeking a spiritual hunger. Right. That's what we were seeking. Right. And, uh, the funny part is, back then, you know, we, we were far away from Christ. Um, but there was still, we knew there was still something with the crosses, because... You know, we, she'd always have her cross earrings on. I'd always have my cross necklace on. And we knew that there was a power out there that was greater and that would protect us. And we knew it was Jesus because we wore his cross. We acknowledged him, but didn't call on him ever. Right. You know, we had a ton of encounters. Yeah, there was one night um, I came home from a ghost hunt, so we called it. And um, I'm just sitting in my room, totally fine nothing, no problem in the world. And I'm have my TV on and I'm on my laptop just laying in bed. And, um, just like I said, content, nothing. Like I wasn't worried about anything. My, my emotions were fine. And all of a sudden I felt this like presence just rush up to me as I'm laying in, in the bed. And just, like, as if somebody went Whoa, like boo at me and, um, and like I just felt that I mean they didn't say boo obviously but in the cartoons they do Hollywood but, they do right but I felt <laughs> um I felt an evil presence try to scare me I opened some kind of portal I want to say this was like the first or second time no I think I went on like two or three ghost hunts and that's when I experienced it so it's like I opened a portal for them to freely come into my life and that was the start of it for me. Um, you know, I was touched. Something grazed my face before. And then I started getting 
little too deep in it and one investigation ended up with me getting partially possessed and you know that was something terrifying that you know i absolutely never ever want to experience again and you know we're covering the blood so luckily we won't but the whole portion of it was you know i was in an investigation whatever that entity that demon that was there was targeting me and you know, it came after me, I was scratched. I still have a scar on my back from where that demon scratched me, so. And I remember I started violently shaking, and it's like convulsing, you know, massively. And sit down, and the only thing I can describe is rage, aggression, anger. Like, I, I, I've never thought of killing, but in that moment, I wanted to. It was, I had the rage of killing like the lady that was there holding my hand like I just wanted to rip her arm off like I mean that sounds horrible and but in that moment that yeah that's what was going on and then right afterwards I it mean like I just, a, it was emotions you not from you from somebody else a spirit right, right. it's right. emotions I have never ever felt right. and I immediately started bawling like hardcore bawling and of course you know we had a group of 15 people and so everybody's sitting in the floor over there watching all this happen to me and so you know everybody's freaking out and so they end up taking me outside and then that's when they realize you know the scratches because it felt like a blowtorch on my back and of course it was in the three in the trinity just want to fast forward a little bit to now so kristen and i we've been born again believers for a little over a year and a half or so and when she was first saved the holy spirit spoke to her and immediately told her that the spirits that are portrayed on tv hollywood what we searched out were in fact demons. And if you're saved, you understand what that means. That it's like a no, like he didn't tell me. Um, it's hard to explain it unless you receive information from the Holy Spirit. You understand what I'm saying. It's like, it's like a psychic ability, except I'm not a psychic. It's God downloading information into me. Like I just, it's like if you study a history book and you learn all these facts, it's like you didn't have to study the book. You just knew the facts. You just, you didn't have to learn it. You just knew it. It's like an immediate knowledge. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. So he gave me this immediate knowledge that those spirits on TV, because we used to watch Ghost Hunters, um, we love demon possession movies. He explained to me very quickly and gave me that knowledge that they were demons. Immediately I knew. They were not deceased loved ones. You know, that's what we thought when we were investigating, that we were helping someone's loved one, or there was something some entity we were helping never never were any of these we would call them bad spirits <laughs> you know we'd say there's good ones and there's bad ones no there isn't you know there's just demons yeah there's just bad ones <laughs> and it came you know that came uh you know reading scripture and putting everything all the pieces together do you want me to read that now yeah it's gonna yeah so we were like led um to start seeking out in the word more um what happens in the afterlife. So um, one story that stuck with me that I, I'm gonna share with you is the rich man and Lazarus. In Luke chapter 16, starting in verse 19 through 31, um, I'm gonna not read all of it just for time's sake. So if you wanna read the story, um, please do that, but essentially, uh, the rich man was sent to hell. In the Greek, it translates to Hades. So you need to note that that's different than the lake of fire. He's in a holding place called hell, Hades, until judgment. So there's, there's a holding cell right now for people that die and don't know Christ. So um, get to verse 26, and it says... Um, Abraham speaking here to the rich man that's in hell. He said... Beside all this, between us, which is him and Lazarus, and you in hell, there is a great gulf fixed. And a great gulf fixed is a wide space between hell and heaven. Um, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So um, they're unable to go back and forth. Um, verse 27 says, Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, this is uh, the rich man speaking, 
Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto them, They have Moses and the prophets. That's us. They have believers. Um, let them hear them. Let the people hear our warnings of hell and the truth about the spiritual realm. They need to hear it from us. And if they're not going to... Oh, I'm jumping ahead. It says, And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. So he's saying, if they're not going to listen to us, they're not going to believe Lazarus. If, or, you know, he wasn't able... The point is, he wasn't able to get a message from hell, Hades to his living family to warn them about hell. He was not able to relay a message in the afterlife. And that's the point of that scripture. To me, that's saying he's unable to speak to us. The the, the people in, in the afterlife are unable to speak to us. That's what I'm gathering from that scripture. No, we were never ghost hunters, you know, after reading, becoming born again, realizing the truth. We were demon hunters. You know, we were dabbling in the occult and not even realizing it. And, you know, we were part of what's on TV. You know, they make it to look cool. Uh, it looks fun. You know, that's part of what Hollywood does. But who is Hollywood ran by? The, the occult. The occult. Um, Ephesians 6.12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And boy, is that true. You know, we were most definitely battling principalities. Um, and also, so uh, I'm going to continue on just kind of reading through here. Uh, so when we became saved, uh, we started getting heavily attacked when we started speaking out of, uh, about the gospel. At first, we didn't know what it was. You know, there was different things. We, start, we were fairly new, and so we were speaking out and trying to shed light on Jesus, you know. And then, was it your fam somebody in your family? your cousin or somebody you know just trying to talk to and trying to visit with about this and you know they just absolutely weren't having it and the i had you ended up going to the hospital because you had a, yeah there's multiple things that happened <laughs> to me i ended up vomiting uh, before i ended up with pain in my neck that they did mris and it was unexplainable yep. then the next day gone yep just gone yeah the gone the doctors were like, I, I, you know, I don't know what's wrong. We have no idea what's wrong with you. And then, and then stuff like that for it to just be gone. And then, you know, that stuff just happens. You know, it just a pain would all of a sudden come. And when you're in the beginning of it, you don't really understand the principality portion of it. You don't really understand what you're dealing with. You know, this pain at first is scary. You know, this is a scary moment. This hurts. What's happening to me? Oh my goodness. This information might be good for like new believers. At least for right. us, this is what we experienced right. when we were first born again and we didn't know how to handle the demonic attacks and they were scary. Right. They were frightening. I even saw, I even saw a face and I th saw what I thought was a raccoon. Remember that? Oh yeah. And I was outside and we were just sitting in our chairs outside and... I saw something running straight. I mean, it was running at me. Yep. And I jump up and I'm screaming and then all of a sudden it's gone. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, was that a raccoon? Did, was there a raccoon right there? No, nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I've seen stuff like that too. You know, as we started growing in our faith, we realized that we had the power to rebuke those entities away in Jesus' name. And you can go read Acts chapter 19, verse 13 through 16. It's the story of how the Jews weren't able to... Um, how the demonic spirits that were in a possessed man overcame the Jews because they're not saved. So it shows us that, and, and they used the name of Jesus, and it didn't work. Um, so, and it's because they're not saved. So you have to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to know that you have authority in Jesus' name right. to, to cast these demons out and um, protect yourself. Exactly. And, you know, the of course, the more we spoke up, the more they kept coming. But part of it, you know, once you start uh, building up your armor, you know, it talks about in Ephesians 6.11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able uh, to stand against the walls of the devil. Well, once you start growing that and maintaining it, you know, what is the armor? We've got the breastplate of righteousness, 
We have the sword of the Holy Spirit, which is the word of God. Uh, we have the belt of truth, the shield of faith. We've got the helmet of salvation, and we have the shoes to spread the gospel. So all of that, you have to keep working on and maintaining all of those. Every day. Every single day. To keep your protection up. Because the devil, the entities, they're still not going to let They're down. not going to go away. No. You have to learn how to fight them. Right. And that's all part of building up your armor, is fighting them off. And another way to fight them is James 4, 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will free, flee from you. Um, and how do you submit to God? Prayer, worship, reading scripture. So all of these can be done in the moment in order to get rid of him. Like um, a few weeks ago, I immediately felt like I was going to vomit out of nowhere for no reason. Um, and I ended up in the bathroom and I just started singing worship songs. I just started singing and immediately it was gone. That was it. And it happened to him. Was it the same day? Yeah, I was, was at work. It was the same day. Happen same thing. Same thing happened to him. And I don't even think we told each other yet. I don't yeah, think it we was. Did. She said that she was sick, and I was like, "Oh, um, I was just sick," <laughs> yeah. because it was just that feeling just came on immediately. And you know that, you know, you know that nothing's wrong, but something's affecting you. So, you know, spiritual. You know, the best part of it all is that it's all worth it in the end. You know, we are now doing God's will. Um, you know, we want others, or we want to reach as many people as we can while we're still here. You know, we have a gracious God. We have a merciful God. We have a loving God. We were completely against Christ. And when we humbled ourselves and fell to our knees weeping that we needed a Savior, He heard us and He came to our rescue. So, you know, we went through, you know, a whole lot of different trials and but God the was transition still there. was difficult it was <laughs> very difficult it was uh, and I'm so glad we did it together because uh, I don't know how I would have handled attacks like we went through by myself I don't know either it's terrifying I don't know either and then that's just how it was you know we you know we, it was two against one you know we just kind of wanted to put testimony out there um, because there could be somebody out there that's this has been on their mind. This has been something that they've done. This has been something that they're watching and not realizing kind of what's going on. Or and something you're going through. Yeah. And so... This you're not alone. No. <laughs> not by any means. Hopefully, hopefully this will help someone that's out there. Yeah, and if you have any questions, you can let us know in the comments and you know, we can try to help you guys. Yeah. So, we love you guys. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today's the day. Romans 10 and 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Lord mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So today's the day, guys. Call on Christ. He's there waiting for you. We love you. Bye guys. Bye.